Well, hello, Life Groups. It's so great to be joining you right now. It's great that you've taken the chance to gather together as a group where we can learn and encourage one another. And I pray that you're doing well in this current season. And we're actually going to start a new series now in our Life Groups from today. Where over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at the armor of God. The armor of God that is found in Ephesians chapter 6. And every day as believers, we face a spiritual battle. We know that as Christians, we are engaged in a battle. We don't get off lightly, unfortunately, when we come to follow Christ. But we get this revelation that we are now part of something bigger than just our day-to-day lives. We're in a battle and we have an enemy who is very real and actively works against us and the plans and purposes of God that we are engaged in. Jesus says in John chapter 10 that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you might have life in all its fullness. So that's God's promise to us, is that he's come to give us life and life in all its fullness, or life in all abundance, but the thief who is the devil is out to steal, kill, and destroy. His whole ethos and his mission is to stand against everything that God would have happen in our lives and here on this earth. To steal your joy, to kill off your faith, to destroy your hope. We are in a battle and we are called to be prepared for that battle. Yes, we have an enemy, but we have also been given tools to stand firm against the devil's schemes. And so over the next few weeks, we are going to examine the full armor of God that Paul gives us in Ephesians chapter 6 and how each piece works in our lives. So let's read our passage here. This is from Ephesians 6, starting at verse 10. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. It's Ephesians 6, verse 10 to 17. And to give a little context to our passage here, this is written by Paul the Apostle, who at the time was under house arrest in Rome. He was in chains, but he knew that that even though he was in captivity in the natural, that didn't stop him being effective in the spiritual. This is why he says we are engaged in a spiritual battle. He was in chains in the natural, but he knew his fight wasn't against natural forces, it was against spiritual forces. And even though your natural circumstances might make you feel ineffective, they might make you feel trapped or in captivity, you know that spiritually you can still fight. You still have a battle that you are engaged in. And he gives the church a picture of the weapons and armor that we have because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. Every piece of the armor points back to Jesus and the finished work on the cross, and we'll discover that and talk about that over the coming weeks. We are in a battle, but you see, the battle has already been won. As Paul says in Romans, we are more than conquerors through Christ, and overwhelming victory is ours through Christ Jesus. Jesus has won the battle, and so we are equipped for a fight with a confident assurance that victory is already ours. And he describes the armor that a a Roman soldier would wear in battle. He was in Rome, so these soldiers would have been everywhere. In fact, I wonder if he was looking at one, maybe his guard while he was in captivity. Maybe he had one with him that he was looking at as he wrote down 
this passage. And he'd been writing to the Ephesian church an incredible letter of encouragement. I mean, Ephesians as a whole is an amazing book. There is so much good stuff in this book. Paul had written to them about their calling to salvation and how they had been made alive in Christ, how they were predestined for God's purposes and how our salvation comes only by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. He's encouraged them in how they as the church are to be united as one body, which echoes his letter to the Corinthians as well, how even though we're all different and we have different skills and abilities, we are united by our faith in Jesus. We are united together as one body. And so for most of this letter, Paul has been encouraging the Christians and the believers in their personal relationship with God, reminding them of their faith in Jesus and their personal conduct and internal conduct between each other as believers. However, now as he gets to the end of his letter, he shifts his focus to the bigger picture, the battle externally that we each face in our daily lives. We must be united as one body and built up so as to be ready for the inevitable battle with evil. He says, when the day of evil comes, he assumes we're going to face it. And each believer needs to be prepared and ready to fight and to stand firm. We are in a battle, but we are armed for that battle. We are not without hope. Verses 10 and 11. Finally, Be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God. Put it on so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Our strength to fight and to stand firm only comes from Jesus Christ and his power in our lives. The word for power here is the same word that Paul uses in chapter 1 of Ephesians where he references God's power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. This is an incredible power. It's not our own ability or strength that counts. It is only the power of God at work in our lives. All the resources that we need to fight are drawn from Christ and his mighty power. The pieces of armor that we will look at over the coming weeks, they come from Christ and his work in our lives. They are only worth putting on, as Paul says. They're only worth taking up because of the Lord's mighty power. And Paul had spent much of the letter up until this point reiterating that fact that Jesus and Jesus alone is the one who is all sufficient. Everything we need in our lives can be found in Jesus Christ. When we are facing trying times, when things are difficult, when we are struggling, it is in Jesus and in his power that we hold on to hope. It is his power at work in our lives that gives us the faith to stand firm. And I know that each of you will be facing different things in your life right now. You will be each at different stages of your life. For some of you, life will be going great, couldn't be better. And then for others, you'll be going, I wonder when things are going to turn around and improve. But no matter where you find yourself today, don't give up hope. You can stand firm. You can remain strong through whatever you're faced because it is not down to your strength or your ability. You are called to be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. It's not be strong in Jono and your own mighty power. I'm not strong and I certainly don't have any power, let alone any mighty power. And so let that encourage you today because where I am weak, He is strong. It's not in your strength. And actually, that's just such a relief, isn't it? It's not in my strength that I'm trying to make it through. When I'm going through challenging things, when my faith is being tested, when I'm up against difficult things, I can be strong not in myself, not because I'm so great, not because of my track record, but because of his mighty power. You're not without hope. God is still working. You can be strong because it is from his strength that we will see victory. But Paul also reminds us of the true nature of our fight. In the next verses, verses 12 to 13, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Our fight is not against flesh and blood. People are not our enemy. The devil is. 
You know, when we're in the thick of the battle and or when we're tired and we're worn out, it's often people who end up bearing the brunt of it from us. I know that's true in my life when I'm tired or if I'm angry or when I'm in a busy season and I just don't have much time. It's the people close to me that often end up being the ones who bear the brunt of my impatience or my frustrations. But Paul reminds us that actually people are the ones we are called to love. People are our mission field. People are who Jesus died for. Our battle isn't against people. Our battle is a spiritual battle. The battle we are called to wage war in is a battle in the heavenly realms, not here in the natural. And as Jesus' hands and feet here on earth, this is so important for us to remember. People are not our enemy. Our battle is. It's not a natural battle. It's a spiritual battle. Your boss is not your enemy. That trying family member is not your enemy. Political parties are not the enemy. We wage a spiritual battle, not against people in the natural. We're in a battle. And we are called to be armed and ready for that fight. Remember the true nature of this battle. And so here are the pieces of the armor of God that we are to wear, that we're to put on, as Paul says, that we're going to unpack over the next few weeks. So they are the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit. And so today for our remaining time, I'm going to look at the first piece of the armor, the belt of truth. But before I do that, I want to throw it back to you for some discussion in your groups. I want you to discuss the following questions though, based on what I've just talked about. Question number one, do you realize, are you aware that you are in a spiritual battle? And then question two, how do you personally remain strong in the Lord, even in those times when you feel weak? All right, we're going to get into our first piece of the armor now, which is the belt of truth. And Jesus has already told us that he is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the truth, not just a truth, not just a nice idea, but he is truth itself. Our reality, our understanding comes from Jesus Christ. And every other piece of the armor is attached to or held in place by the belt. The belt is what secured the armor in place. Without the belt, nothing was secure, nothing would stay put. In fact, if you've ever worn jeans, you understand how important a belt is if you want to feel secure. You see, the truth is what holds everything together. It's what gives us security and freedom. Jesus says in John 8, 32, you shall know the truth, And the truth shall set you free. We know the truth. The truth about who Jesus is. What he has done for us on on the cross. That truth is what gives us complete confidence. It is my security and it is my freedom. You see, the enemy, the devil, is called the father of lies. Lying is his natural language. It comes naturally to him. Everything he speaks of is lies. All lies find their origin in the enemy. He cannot create. He can only distort. And so one of his primary tactics is to take the truth and just twist it slightly. Just take what God has said. Take the truth and twist it slightly. Just distort it a little bit. You see see that that's what happened in the garden with even the serpent. The devil took what God had said and he twisted it just enough to deceive Eve. And when Eve was deceived, when she believed that lie, she fell into captivity. She fell into the chains of sin and of death. And this is what Jesus says, the truth shall set you free from. When you receive the truth about Christ, when that truth enters your heart and your mind, you are set free from the lies of the enemy. You are set free from the slavery that you were once under to sin and to death. And so if we do not begin the battle in truth, we are never going to defeat the enemy. 
And if we do not have the truth secured in our lives, buckled around our waist like a belt, then nothing else in our lives will be secure. The truth is what everything else is secured to. And I believe for many of us, and this is myself included, that this is a battle around our identity and our purpose. You know, in my life, this is the number one thing that I feel feel the enemies attacking. The lies around who I am and what God has called me to do. The lies of inadequacy, that I'm not lovable, that I'm unforgivable, that I'll never achieve anything, that I'm not smart, I'm ineffective, I won't amount to anything. God couldn't love me or even forgive me. He can't use me. Do any of those sound familiar to you? They are the same lies that come from the father of lies. And their only purpose is to erode my security and my freedom in living out the purposes of God in my life. But when I have the belt of truth buckled around my waist, when I know that I am loved, that I am forgiven, that I have been set free, that God is with me and he has a plan for me, that truth sets me free from those lies and gives me the confidence to continue the good fight of faith. How do we ensure that the belt is securely fastened around our waist? We read and meditate on God's word. God's word is truth. It is from God's word that we receive the truth about ourselves and who God is. Scripture is our number one truth reset. When things have become unaligned in my life, when I have wrong thinkings or wrong patterns, Scripture is what brings me back into alignment. It's what resets my priorities in life. As I read the Word and I allow the truth to set into my heart, it's like I'm fastening the belt of truth around my waist. And from that truth, every other piece is attached. If I don't place a high value of Scripture in my life, then nothing else in my life can be secure. I can't know the righteousness of Christ that protects my heart. I can't have peace. I can't have joy through anything. I can't have hope for a better tomorrow. I can't have faith because it is only through the revealed word of God that those things, those truths become alive in my heart and in my mind. And our world today is in a battle for truth. There is a global fight for what is true. And we know that Jesus is the truth that people really need. It is in Christ and in his word that I find the truth that sets me free. And so I want to finish it there and I'm going to throw it back to you for some discussion. And next time we're going to look at the next two pieces of the armor, the breastplate of righteousness and the shoes of the gospel of peace. But before you go into discussion, let me pray for you and then I will release you. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for the overwhelming victory that is ours through Christ Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that you have already won the battle, that you have overcome and you sit victorious at the right hand of the Father. And so, Lord, I pray that as we discuss this, this armor that we can wear, these incredible pieces of the armor that are found in Jesus Christ because of the finished work of the cross, I pray that your truth would become alive again in our hearts that we would fasten the belt of truth around our waist, that truth about you and who you have made us to be would be the secure foundation that we build our lives upon, that everything else would find its connection and its security from truth. Lord, where there are those who have heard the lies of the enemy, lies of inadequacy or not being loved or not being worthy, I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that by your power you would reveal the truth to them says that you shall know the truth and it shall set you free. Set people free right now, Holy Spirit, I ask in Jesus' mighty name, that the truth that is found in your word, that they are loved, they are forgiven, that they are a child of God. Let those truths replace lies of the enemy in Jesus' mighty name. I thank you for every person who's watching and engaging right now. Pray for fruitful discussion. Be with them, I pray, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.